Welcome to Math 162 Trigonometry. Uh, before we get to the tr actual trigonometry part, we have to spend a couple of sections on geometry, which most of which you probably remember from high school. I want you to first notice that at the beginning of each section in the notes, at the top I have HW for homework. That's the list of homework problems for you to do for each section. So I may not remember to tell you to do your homework, but when we finish a section, for sure do all the homework problems. If we get through part of a section, you can probably start at the beginning and get through part of them. But the one thing to remember is you cannot get behind in a math class, so you have to keep up. Okay, let's do the first definition. The first definition says a ray is a portion of a line AB that starts at A and continues through B. I've I always underline the word, the phrase that I'm defining, so there I'm defining ray. And what does portion mean? Portion is part of. So a ray is a part of a line AB. So if you imagine a line here, here's point A and here's point B, imagine the line going through those two points. Okay, so that's the line AB. This is a ray is a portion of a line, so it's part of that that starts at A. It starts at A and continues through B. So this part of the line is not actually there when you define a ray. Okay, and the notation we use is AB with that. Now, the order matters here. This is the ray starting at A and going through B. If I wrote BA, that would not be that ray. It would be this ray where that's B and that's A. So the, the order matters here. Okay. Now, the only reason we're defining ray is because it's used in the Dick's definition. Okay. So this is a ray AB. The next definition says... An angle is formed by rotating a ray around its endpoint. Right? So imagine we have a ray. I'm just going to write, draw it horizontally. So there's a ray starting at this point and continuing through a point over there. It's formed by rotating a ray around its endpoint. So there's the endpoint, and we're rotating. I'm just going to imagine it rotates up. It can go up or down. Right? So my, uh, my original ray I started with, this is called the initial side. The point we're rotating, uh, the, the end of the original ray is called the vertex of the angle. And where the ray stops is called the terminal side of the angle. Now, when I, was, when I first learned geometry you know, a long time ago, uh, I always thought of an angle as the space right here between the two sides of, say, a triangle, right? The space was the angle. But an angle is, is you know, three components an initial side, a terminal side, and the direction you rotate. So it's not the space in between, it's the, it's the direction with you, in which you rotate. So there's the definition of an angle. So an angle is an initial side, a ray, the terminal side, and the rotation. So that's the definition of an angle. The next definition says if the rotation of the terminal side is counterclockwise, uh, you know, compared to the initial side, the angle is positive, if the rotation is clockwise, the angle is negative, okay? So I left space to draw some examples here. So suppose I drew this, that right there, and I said, is this a positive angle or a negative angle? Well, you can't answer that question, can you? Because I didn't indicate the rotation, okay? Remember, an angle is an initial side, a terminal side, and rotation. Here, you don't know what is the initial side and the terminal side because I didn't put rotation. So suppose I put this rotation in. Is this a positive angle or a negative angle? Well, which way are we rotating? We're rotating in a clockwise direction, so this is, this is a negative angle. And let me draw one more. Suppose I did that. So initial side here, rotation is this way, terminal side is there. Is that a positive angle or a negative angle? No, if we're rotating counterclockwise, that's positive. Okay. Now, the initial side, notice I've drawn the initial side going to the right horizontally in all three examples, because that's generally the way we're going to do all these angles in this book. Uh, so I, I usually don't think of it as count, clockwise and counterclockwise. If the, if the initial side is running horizontally to the right, up, up is positive and down is negative. So this went down negative, that went up positive. 
Okay, but again, that's only if the initial side is in this direction, which we're pretty much going to do throughout, throughout the course. Uh, notice what's interesting about this definition of angle is we talked about positive angles and negative angles, but uh, it seems to me they left one out. If you were just talking about real numbers and you had positive real numbers and negative real numbers, is that every real number? Notice there's a glaring omission, the zero. So notice here we have negative angles and positive angles. What do you think the zero angle would look like? Well, it's exactly what you would imagine. So there's the initial side. So a neutral angle that's neither positive nor negative, what would you think it would do? It wouldn't rotate at all. The terminal side would just sit on top. So there's no rotation. So this is, they should have defined that here, but that's really what you would think of as a neutral angle, the zero angle. Uh, definition, a degree is a unit of measure for angles. I know you know this. One complete rotation is 360 degrees. So if you have the initial side here and you rotate one complete revolution all the way around in the positive direction, that's 360 degrees. Notice what's interesting is normally when you define something, you want to know how big one of them is. If you were teaching grade school and you were telling the students, you were trying to explain the idea of how, how long a foot is, you, know, you wouldn't say, well, it's 12 inches. That wouldn't tell them anything. What would you do? You would hold up a ruler and say, there's a foot, right? That shows them how big one of them is, and then they can imagine two or three or four. Notice here they, 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 they define one degree in terms of how many all the way around, 360. Why didn't they explain one? Well, if you tried to draw one degree, I mean, how would you even do that? I mean, if I try to draw it tiny, that's, that's bigger than one degree. I mean, that's probably, you know, five, six, seven degrees right there, okay? So I think they just, you know, they figure, you know, your, your college students, you can imagine if that's 360, one of them would be very small, but it's hard to explain what one of them looks like. Okay, we have some names for some special angles here. So the first are acute angles. What's the definition of an acute angle? It's any angle from zero degrees to 90 degrees. Now I'm using interval notation here. Remember, interval notation is anything from this value to this value, not including parentheses means don't include the endpoint. So zero degrees and 90 degrees are not acute. And remember, we don't just live in the world of integers. Zero to 90 is not one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, et cetera, to 89. It's 2.8 and 50.37 and, and five and two eight, uh, two sevenths. Okay, so it's all the numbers between, not just integers. And what's an example of an acute angle? Right, there's a picture of an acute angle. Remember, 360 degrees is all the way around. 90 degrees is a fourth of the way around. That's our next example, actually. A right angle is exactly 90 degrees, which I know you know. So initial side here, it's a fourth of the way around, which takes you to here. So there's a picture of 90 degrees. And often we indicate 90 degrees with a little box. So there's 90 degrees. The next example is an obtuse angle. An obtuse angle is an angle from 90 degrees to 180 degrees, again, not including the endpoints. And what's a picture of an obtuse angle? Well, obtuse is more than 90 and less than halfway around. So say to here. So there's a, an example of an obtuse angle. And then our last definition there is called a straight angle. And that's exactly 180 degrees. That'd be halfway around. So if you rotate halfway around instead of all the way, there's a picture of 180 degrees. That's a straight angle. And it makes sense. A straight angle makes a straight line. Okay, so those are just some vocabulary that you should know. The next definition is a, a relation between two angles. If the sum of two positive angles is 90 degrees, the angles are called complementary. If the sum is 180 degrees, the angles are supplementary, okay? So if the sum of two positive angles is 90 degrees, we say the angles are complementary. Notice how complement is spelled here. It's C-O-M-P-L-E. As C-O-M-P-L-I is paying someone a compliment, you look very nice today. Compliment with an E is like 
you know, if you say, you know, two business partners complement each other, that means one strengths is the other's weaknesses and vice versa. That the, the two of them together make a good whole. That's the idea. And if the sum of two positive uh, angles is 180, we say the angles are supplementary. Now, I always used to get, get these mixed up. I, I just make alphabetical order. Complementary C before S, supplementary 90 before 180. So complementary is 90, supplementary is 180. That's how I keep, keep them straight. Okay, let's do an example using this. It says the difference between two complementary angles is 40 degrees. How large is each angle? So there's a little word problem here that we're going to use some uh, algebra. Uh, now, what facts do they give us here? The difference between two angles is 40 degrees. That's one fact. And then the angles are complementary. That's the other fact. How large is each angle? Okay, well, let's define some variables. You shouldn't just start using variables. You need to tell the reader, in particular me, what, you, what they stand for. So I'm going to let x be, well, I'll just do them both. Let x and y be the measures of the two angles. You don't say let x equal x be an angle and y be an angle. An angle is a thing, right? It, it, this is an angle, right? It doesn't make sense to say that is x, right? X stands for a number, so it's the measure of the angle. Right? It's like saying let x be car. That doesn't make any sense. X could be the age of the car. X could be the weight of the car. X could be the speed of the car, right? A numerical value. Okay, now what do we know? Uh, the difference between the two angles is 40 degrees. So if I take the difference between the angles, that's a minus, I get 40. I'm not going to put the degree sign uh, in, the, in the middle of, a, of an equation. I'll just have to remember at the end to put the degree sign. And we know the angles are complementary. So if the angles are complementary, that means their sum is 90 degrees. So notice I've created a system of two equations and two variables. And you remember from college algebra, there's several ways you can do this. You can do substitution, solve for one of the variables and one of the equations, and then substitute into the second equation. Uh, you could do graphing, which I don't recommend because you have to solve for y, solve for y if you wanted to. Graph those two lines, see where they intersect. That's not very accurate. Or you could use the addition subtraction method, which is also called the elimination method, which is what I'm going to use here. Uh, because it's, it's set up perfectly for that. Remember, the idea is to make the coefficients of one of the variables match but be off by a minus sign. So I have a 1 and a 1. I have a 1 and a minus 1. That's exactly what you want uh, when you, uh, for elimination method. <coughs> so if this is equal to this and this is equal to this, this plus this should be this plus this. That's a true statement. So notice x minus y plus x plus y. x plus x is 2x. Negative y plus y is zero. That's the whole point of having them opposite signs because when you add them, they drop out. And then over here, you add, you get 130. 90 plus 40 is 130. Now I have one equation and one variable. We know how to solve. If you divide both sides by two, you get x is 130 over two, which looks like that's 65 degrees. Notice I put my degree sign at the end. <coughs> All right, now it said find the measure of both angles. We need y, but what's y? Well. Uh, x plus y is 90. It's the complement of 65, which is 25 degrees. Now let's see if that makes sense. Right? They have to be complementary. 65 and 25 is a 90, and the difference is 40. 65 minus 25 is 40 degrees. So there's our, our, our two angles. So the angles are 25 degrees and 65. Again, whenever you mean degrees, you need to be writing a degree sign. Okay, when we get to radians, if you leave off the degree sign, you're telling me radians, which would be wrong. So uh, here you need the degree sign. Again, in calculations like this, you don't need them for, you know, just going back to algebra. Okay. So we practice with some supplements and complements. Okay, the next example is let's do some arithmetic with these things. But first what we want to do is uh, chop up. So if you have a one degree, which I can't draw, and here's one degree that's too big. You can chop a degree up into 60 pieces called minutes. So one degree, let me write it up here. 
So one degree you can chop up into pieces called minutes, and the notation is a single prime. That's for minutes. Notice we also use that, you know, like for feet. For example, I'm five foot nine, right? We use the prime for feet, but here we're using it for minutes. So you have to get it from the context which one you're talking about. So one degree is 60 minutes. Well, you take that degree, you chop it into 60 pieces called minutes. You can also chop the minutes into smaller pieces called seconds. So one minute is 60 seconds, and we denote that with the double prime. So we use the prime and the double prime for feet and inches. We also use it for minutes and seconds. And I'm not talking about time, all right? I'm talking about in terms of angle measure, degrees and seconds. You may ask yourself, why in the world do we need to have all these different units? Well, we have lots of units, say, for length. We have feet, we have inches, we have yards, we have meters, we have centimeters, we have miles, we have kilometers, we have light years. Right? Why do we need so many different units of measurement? Well, imagine if we did everything in inches. We said, we don't need all these other different things. Let's just do everything in inches. Imagine a, a, a sign out on the highway that you know, you're, you're here in Hammond and you're, and you're going to Baton Rouge and it says, <laughs> Baton Rouge, you know, 300 and something thousand inches, right? If everything were in inches, the numbers could get unwieldy for, for you know, large, say, distances. So we, we have different units for different purposes. So same thing here, so degrees and minutes and seconds. Now, you may say, wait a minute, I couldn't even draw a degree, much less a minute or a second, but imagine on a globe with latitude and longitude, if I remember correctly, you know, a second is, you know, a second on, on a globe, if you rotate for a second, it's several, you know, city blocks. So that actually is a decent amount of rotation if you imagine it, say, on a globe. So for our purposes, minutes and seconds are so tiny we can't visualize. But in terms of the scale of, say, a globe, it, it makes a little more sense. Okay, so let's do an example. It says add 52 degrees, 41 minutes, 23 seconds to 17 degrees, 25 minutes, 40 seconds. <coughs> Hey, we want to add these two together. Well, before, before we do this, imagine, suppose you were watching a television program that lasted 45 minutes long. And then you watched another television, and you watched television for a little while longer for 20 minutes. Well, how long have you watched TV? Again, we're just talking about regular time here. Well, you could say 65 minutes, no problem, right? So you watch for 65 minutes. But what if you want to break this in terms of hours, right? You would take 60 of the minutes and say that's one hour, five minutes, right? Once you reach 60, you can change that amount to an hour, and then just whatever's left over is still minutes, okay? We're going to do the exact same thing here with the degrees, minutes, and seconds. Once we hit 60 seconds, we can convert to a minute. Once you hit 60 minutes, you can convert to a degree. So I'm just going to do that as we go. So I'm going to go from right to left. If I have 23 minutes and 40 minutes, that's 63 minutes. Well, six, uh, sorry, seconds, sorry, 23 seconds and 40 seconds. That's 63 seconds, but what's 63 seconds? That's one minute and three seconds. So I'm going to have three seconds here, and I'm going to carry the minute, right? So that's 63 seconds, but a 63 seconds is one minute and three seconds. So I've carried the one. Notice I didn't carry the 60 because I want these to be in the same unit. So it's 60 seconds, but that's one minute. So now let me add my minutes. I have 41 minutes and one minute and 25 minutes. That's 67 minutes, okay? So 67 minutes, I've gone over 60. So 67 minutes is one degree and seven minutes. And now I'm just gonna add the minutes down. What is that, 50, 60, is it 70? That's 70 degrees. Again, make sure you put your units here. Okay, so the sum of those two is 70 degrees, seven minutes, three seconds. Uh, for those of you that are using a TI-84, uh, I'll, I'll show you how to do this on the calculator, even though I think it's easier just to do this. So that'll be at the end of the part two video for this section. Okay, the next one says subtract 22 degrees 48 minutes from 40 degrees 10 minutes. Okay, again, you can do this on the calculator, but I'm just going to do it by hand because it's, it's easier, I think. <coughs> Again, we're going to go from right to left, just like you would in a normal subtraction problem of, of say, uh, multi-digit integers. Uh, but what's the problem here? You can't take the 48 from the 10. There's not enough minutes here to subtract the 48 from it. So what do we do? Well, what did you do in grade school when you didn't have enough in a column to subtract? You had to borrow. 
Okay, so I'm going to borrow a degree from the 40, that gives me 39 degrees. So now I have this degree, this extra degree I have, I have to account for. But if I move the degree over here, I have one degree and 10 minutes. So you need to convert the degree to, to minutes. So one degree is 60 minutes. So this one degree I borrowed is 60 minutes plus the 10 is 70 minutes. Okay, so all I've done is rewritten 40 degrees, 10 minutes is 39 degrees, 70 minutes. And they're the same thing. But notice now I have more minutes here than I do here. So I can, now you just subtract down. So that's 17 degrees and 70 minus 40 is 22 minutes. Always double check my work, my arithmetic. Okay, so that's how you do that. If I had had seconds here, you may have to borrow from the minutes to do seconds and then borrow from the degrees to do the minutes. You may have to borrow twice, but okay, so that's that one. <coughs> okay. Okay, um, we also want to be able to convert between measures. For example, if you have, you know, three, you know, three feet, you may want to say one yard. Or if you have one yard, you want to say three feet. Sometimes you want to use a, a certain measurement over another for some reason. Uh, so let's look at 45 degrees, 30 minutes. So the instructions say, convert this to decimal degrees. Okay. So what they mean there is we don't want minutes. We want 45 point something degrees, okay? So you wanna get rid of the uh, uh, minutes uh, measurement and just have it all degrees, okay? So 45 degrees, no problem, we have 45 degrees. Well, this is one I just made up to eyeball. There's no math here, we're just gonna eyeball. Well, 30 minutes is what fraction of a whole degree? Well, 60 minutes is one degree, so 30 minutes is half of a degree. So you can just eyeball this one and say that's 45.5 degrees. Notice you, it's not 0.3. Don't just take that and make that the decimal. That's not right. Remember, because we're basing it out of 60. 30 minutes out of 60 is a half. So 30 minutes is 0.5 degrees. So this is just one you eyeball. There's no work to do here. I just wanted you to see what the instruction means. So when it says convert to decimal degrees, it means this. Dec you know, whatever the fraction that is, convert to decimal degrees. Okay, so the next one says, uh, we'll do the, no, the next one says, convert 17 degrees, 21 minutes, 37 seconds to decimal degrees. Okay, so I'm going to do this teaching unit conversion because you can use unit conversion in a lot of, uh, other courses. If you've had chemistry and done stoichiometry, you're just using unit conversion. <clears throat> you know, grams to moles, that sort of thing. So I'm going to teach you generic unit conversion. So I'm going to make this problem a lot harder than it is. But so when we do unit conversion later with radians and degrees, I don't have to you know teach you it uh, uh, again. Okay. So we want to go to decimal degrees. Well, let's think about approximately how big this is going to be before we do the problem. It's always a good idea to ask yourself what you think the answer is. So ignoring the seconds here, 21 minutes. It's about 20 minutes, it's a little more than 20 minutes, and 20 is what fraction of a degree? 20 minutes. 20 minutes out of 60 is a third. So you would expect this to be, it's a little more than a third, so it's a little bit more than 0.33333 as a decimal. So I know this answer is going to be a little bit more than 0.333, right? Because it's a little more than 20 out of the 60. Okay, so I'm going to start with the seconds and convert to minutes. So I'm going to write seconds here. I'm going to put over one just to make it look like a fraction. Okay, so 37 seconds. I want to convert seconds to minutes. Okay, so I'm going to multiply by a fraction. Now, I always focus on units first. Don't worry about the numbers. Just focus on the units. I have seconds here in the numerator. If I want to get rid of the seconds units so they cancel, where should they go? Over here, they should go in the denominator. So the seconds units will cancel and I want to go to minutes. So notice, you cancel the minute, the seconds units, you'll be left with minutes. That's what I'm through. Argue units first, then put in the numbers. Now we have to have a fraction that's equal to one. So ask yourself, how many minutes or how many seconds? Well, I know that one minute is 60 seconds. 
Mm, excuse me. Okay, so notice the seconds will cancel, you'll be left with units. So let me just type in 37 over 60 to get a decimal. Oops. <laughs> 37 over 60, it's about 0.6166. I'm going to take it out to several decimal places. Always, always take your decimal way far out. Especially if, if in a homework or test, let's say round your answer to two decimal places, don't do two decimal places in the intermediate calculations because the rounding on the rounding is going to get you way off. So always, you know, go out a lot further than you're going to need at the end. So this 37 over 60 turns out to be 0.61667 minutes. So I went from seconds to minutes. Okay. So now I have 21 minutes here. I have this number of minutes from the seconds here. So how many total minutes do I have now? 21. 0.61667 minutes. So that's these two together is this. So this is how many minutes I have. I want to convert this to decimal, deg uh, sorry, to degrees. Well, let's do the same argument I did before. I have minutes. I want to get rid of minutes, so the minutes go here. And I want to go to degrees, so degrees go here. Then ask yourself numbers. Do the unit argument first. Now, how many, how many degrees is how many minutes? Notice one degree is 60 minutes. So notice this fraction is equal to one, even though the numbers are one and 60, one degree is 60 minutes. So the fraction is equal to one. So when I multiply by this, I'm not changing the value because I'm multiplying by one. I'm just changing the appearance. I'm changing the units. Okay, so then uh, 21.61667 divided by 60. This is 0 0.36, I'll go to four places. 3603 if you round to four places. Now, what are the units here? I canceled my minutes unit, so I'm left with degrees. Now, please, please make sure that you ask the question, answer the question that was asked, right? It didn't say convert what I have in the box here to, you know, degrees. It said convert the whole thing. This is not the final answer, right? This 0 0.3603 degrees is how many degrees this expression in the box is, but I still have this extra 17 degrees, so I have 17 degrees plus that. The final answer is 17 degrees. 0.3603 degrees. That's the final answer. Don't forget to put in the 17 minutes. Okay, so we'll finish this section in part two of the video, and at the end of that, I'll also show you how to do some of these on the calculator.